Hello again and welcome back to IWR TV. Every rugby fan will recognise where we are today. We're here for a meeting which we couldn't previously publicise with the Welsh Rugby Union and the BBC where we've been asked to address rights to matches and also the manner in which we addressed our previous meeting on social media. It's approaching half past three on Monday the 14th of April, so we're off to see what's next for IWR TV. Meanwhile, we'll leave you to enjoy some highlights of Cardiff Met versus Pontypool, and I'll be back later to update you on how things went. We've just come out of a meeting with representatives from the Welsh Rugby Union, the BBC and S4C who have asked us not to show any more grassroots games on our show. They have however asked us to put a business plan together for next year's matches. This will include a financial contribution of hundreds of thousands of pounds. At this stage IWR TV would cease to function next year so if you do know someone that could help us with that kind of money please do get in touch with us urgently. We're on our way to Restragunlice to watch their rearranged Division 5 South West match against Tonna. Later in the show we'll be talking to former WRU referee Hugh Watkins and in the meantime we've stopped off at Flandarcy Academy of Sport to talk to Osprey CEO Andrew Hoare. But first let's look back on recent developments for IWR TV. As you will have seen, Stuart, who deals with all commercial aspects of IWR TV, attended the meeting and is with me now. What were your overriding feelings leaving the stadium on Monday? One of dismay really. From our discussions during both our meetings, what became obvious to me was the Welsh Rugby Union's priority in revenue building and total control, with little regard to the promotion of grassroots rugby in Wales, especially with regards to digital media, apart from a little bit of lip service. The undeniable fact is that any rugby player that put on a pair of boots from international level down all started at grassroots level. It just amazes me that until IWR TV came along there was virtually no coverage of this fundamental level of rugby being shown and that prospect doesn't look like that's going to change. For our part we saw this as an opportunity to promote our national sport to encourage players into the game along with new supporters and also to actually help reverse the apparent trend to football. If someone can explain to me how are the shows we've produced are not in the best interest of Welsh rugby, I'd like them to tell me. Obviously Paul Turner who works with us on IWR TV couldn't make the meeting on Monday as he was running a training camp for students in Paris but we've caught up with him since and got his views on the outcome. IWR TV sounded you know, a great project to get involved with. Um, it's pretty close to my heart with the grassroots, um, given that that's where I was sort of brought up in, you know, first and second class rugby within my region, which was Gwent. And uh, after meeting with Gareth and Stuart, um, um, they proved that they had that sort of ambition to try and get the show going. The show for me, um, it reminds me of a lot when I was when I was a kid. Uh, we always used to either have uh, you know Monday night news shots of uh, of local rugby, and I find this 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 is missing at, at this present time. You know, you can some of the clubs we've been to, the junior clubs, um, are really craving for some some footage so that uh, I suppose their um, their members, their supporters uh, can watch their undoubted heroes on, 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 on the field and uh, that isn't happening these days so with that you know it was a real good project to get involved with. I think we're a little bit different from from other programs or rugby programs around at the moment where we, we tend to speak our mind um, and our honest opinion and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Judging by recent comments I think you know the participation agreement um, is, is quite a way away. Europe has been barren, you know, we've just had to look at this year, this season, where no sides made quarterfinals and they won't do on the budgets that they're working with. So, 
it's going to have a huge effect when they sign this next one and it's going to take another four or five years to get back to where we should be. David Moffat, um, sort of love him or loathe him, um, he certainly turned a few heads since arriving back on these shores. Um, I think without him there'd have been no debate. I think everyone was afraid. Um, and he certainly grasped the nettle. Most of his manifesto, I'd say 90, 99% of his manifesto is, uh, is common sense. And he certainly stirred things up um, in the right way. And I feel that uh, clubs, but more importantly, members of clubs should take notice of what David Moffat is saying because um, we've, got, we've had some clubs recently gone out of business and more will go out of business, um, that's for sure. So Andrew, thanks for joining us on the show. Um, obviously the European um, Champions Cup agreement's now been signed, which has got to be great news for the region. You must feel much more positive that a participation agreement will be signed soon as well. Yeah, well, I don't know about the participation agreement. It's, uh, it's definitely been, I think what, what we've seen through this whole period is just how hard um, certain factions are with regard to negotiation and to get across the line. So I don't hold a great deal of hope. Um, it is what we do want to get it across the line and we want to get things sorted. Um, and the regions have sent two different proposals to the, to the sticking points and uh, a number of principles we feel need to be agreed. We're still waiting for answers on that and um, uh, hopefully once we get that we can move things forward. How difficult is the political situation at, in Welsh Rugby at the moment and how much is it holding you back? Oh look, I think it's been widely recognised that Welsh Rugby's probably grappled a little bit with its governance structure for quite a wee while. Um, and it's something that probably needs to be looked at and changed to, to, to meet the, the modern needs of the modern game. Um, people have come in, I think, probably to be fair to David Moffey, probably drove it uh, as hard as he could uh, at that particular time. And uh, subsequently, I think it's probably gone into a little bit of a lull and, 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 and retrenched somewhat. So I think, look, there's some massive issues to be reviewed, um, greater transparency, um, a greater balance to the, to the board of, of the needs of, of the modern society because all we are as a sport is a reflection of society. Um, so those kind of things need to be addressed and, and, and then we can hopefully make some good business decisions and, and move forward. David Moffat coming back into the fray, is that a, a good thing or is that just going to cause more confusion? The issues that I think that David are, is alluding to is, is the community and the premiership game and the regional game and the international game. Uh, we're limited in our focus, however there's no doubt that the issues facing club and Premiership Rugby have an effect on us. So we all seem to be in a similar position, the only thing that changes is the amount of zeros often on the end of the cheque. On the field this year, perhaps not the season you were, you were hoping for at the start, how much has that been dictated by off the field events? Uh, look, there's no doubt that it, it has an effect. It's, it's really hard on your staff, on uh, your rugby management, uh, and the team when every couple of weeks you're giving them an update and there's no answer to things. Now this is a people business and I think we've forgotten that um, and it's you know and so people get affected and they hurt and they worry and that no doubt has an effect on the people that want to support us but also the the players themselves, the people around the players um, so it's it's immense and I don't think when um, the people that were basically largely uh, inhibiting progress took that into account. That damage is going to take a long, long time to repair. The decisions we make today won't be seen for another four, five, six years. The issues we've got in the community game can't be corrected for a long time. The issues that are happening today in the game and the community game will start to reflect themselves in the regional and international game long after this current regime are gone. So, you know, basically your chairman, your CEO, your board, um, they, they actually should be measured on what happens tomorrow, not so much on what happens today. So the Ospreys often get complimented on the work they do in the region. Do you want to talk us through some of the community initiatives you, you've got at the moment? Yeah, well we have the schools programme which has, I think, got quite a, a large bit of national acclaim. It's um, tied into the curriculum. 3,000 young people went through that, looking at things such as renewable energy, 
uh, making positive choices, you know, a whole raft of, of life skills. I think that's fantastic. We obviously have put the DDO into Bridge End in the past um, because that area didn't have one. Those kind of initiatives are very, very important. And we've had over 375 community visits this year. I mean, you hear people saying that clubs have done this and, and, and they haven't done that, but the, the facts speak for themselves. We get our people out and about, and to be fair to our players, they've bought in and understand that how important that is. Community rugby is extremely important. As it stands at the moment in the PA, we're actually restricted in what we can do, and we don't feel this is right. Uh, we think this is something to have to change. Again, it's about hooking young people into sport at the, at the, at the coalface, and we're being excluded from it. We'd like to be in a position to do more. Don't think for a minute that if we get an increase in funding from wherever, that that money automatically goes into the squad. We make a decision in this business to spread that across the business to do what's best for rugby because the more we can try to do in the community, hopefully the more young people we hook into the sport, which keeps us sustainable and successfully sustainable for longer. And obviously the ethos of our show is to show more grassroots games that perhaps aren't getting seen by a wider public. How important is that to, the, to those grassroots players? Oh, massively. Um, and I think too, um, we and every other region is guilty of potentially missing talent. Um, there's no doubt about that. And sometimes you make a mistake and that's, that's inevitable, that's life. But shows like yours help us with that. Um, it also exposes their commercial partners, which helps hopefully bring money into the game. So we can't underestimate the effect of more exposure of that level can make because there is people out there that could be playing, coaching or refing at the professional level and that gives them exposure and also it just brings more commercial support into the, into the whole sport. It's the morning after the night before, well, two days after our meeting with the Welsh Rugby Union, and the dust has settled, and we've had the opportunity to digest and analyse what was said at the time. It was made clear to us that the WRU, BBC and S4C do not wish us to show any more grassroots rugby on this show. During the meeting, we were informed that the broadcasters have no further plans to show grassroots games this year, however they wish to protect their rights for next year when they claim they are planning to show more grassroots games to enhance their own online and digital offering. If, how and when they plan to do this is as yet unclear, although a time frame of months was mentioned. And if, by pushing the broadcasters to show more grassroots rugby is to be the legacy of IWR TV, this would be no bad thing and an achievement we would be incredibly proud of. We have been asked to refrain from showing matches and instead concentrate on writing a business plan for the rights to next year's matches. This must include information about our editorial stance, as well as a financial contribution of £200,000, which would then be considered by the BBC and the WRU in its entirety. This money would be paid to the BBC, who would transfer it to the Welsh Rugby Union for them to distribute as they see fit. This proposal is, in the eyes of the Union, the best way to protect the rights package they have to sell and to help grassroots rugby in Wales. We did seek to find a solution to ensure rights remain protected, and that was by offering a nominal fee for a contract of use for these games which were not being broadcast elsewhere. We also asked to be allowed three months grace to show games and prove the business case for the show, however this was also rejected. We will have the opportunity to explore this further on our next panel show, which will hopefully also include a member of the Welsh Rugby Union following a written invitation we hand delivered at the meeting. Hugh, um, great season at Astra Gunlice at the moment, doing well? Yeah, it's been, it's been much improved really. Uh, Werner Cooper, former Scarlett, came back to the coach. And to be honest, it's made a big, big difference just having more organisation on the field. It seems to be people are excited about playing for Astra again, it's made a big difference. We've also got a good youth policy as well. There's only one player on the field tonight that hasn't played youth rugby for the club. Really pushing for promotion this year. How, how many more games do you need to win? There's five games left. There's, there's still two or three sides in it. It's been a very competitive league. Up until very recently, there's been six sides that could have gone up, everybody's beaten everybody. It's been exciting, it's good, it's very good advert for grassroots rugby. And you mentioned your youth policy, obviously we're well aware of the, the likes of Dan Baker and Owen Williams coming through the club. Um, you must be developing the players from a really young age. Yeah, we've, uh, we've got a mini and junior system. Uh, we've also started a fun and fitness a club called Tiger Blues. Tigers after Owen Williams is signing up there, so they've got a bit of a role model to follow. 
it's been great the, the numbers are up yeah, massively compared to where we've been, but it's down to a lot of hard work from volunteers as well and a lot of parents, so we're always thankful for that. Yeah, that's often the case in, in the grassroots clubs, getting those guys involved. How often do you see the likes of, uh, of the international or potential international players coming to the club? They'll always be back for presentations, especially for the junior ones. They've got a big ethos for the juniors, yeah. You can see them sometimes on uh, things like Twitter, if our juniors or youth have got a big game, they'll always be tweeted more regularly than the senior team, really because they can understand what it was like at that age. You mentioned Twitter, you're very active yourself on social media as, as we know, and that seems to be paying dividends for the club. Oh, it's de definitely. Uh, the Scarlets and Leicester follow us and regularly contact with us to advertise things that's going on in the club, not just on the field, but socially as well, to get people here when there's events on. I guess you're aware, well aware of IWR TV. Um, we've had our ups and downs, but how important is a, is a show like this to a club like yourselves in, in the sort of grassroots areas? Oh, it's vital that grassroots rugby is covered. You've got to have it. It's the one spectrum that's not being, uh, that's not being covered at all at the moment. Uh, you know, people support their regions, but people love their clubs, don't they? So they're very passionate about it, especially when you think the people are here. Most, most people here in grassroots club are volunteers. They're doing something and they're involved to belong in. Excellent. Thank you. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank and, you very uh, much. We'll be following you with interest. Thank oh, you. Thanks. You've been with the club quite a long time. 50, 52 years, I think. Yes, 52 years. Man and boy, as they say. Yeah. yeah. So you must have seen quite a few ups and downs. How does the, the current state of playing grassroots rugby, and particularly your club? Um, we went through a very rough time up until uh, this year. Um, the boys stuck at it, but there are people who will tell you the grassroots is strong. Uh, no way. Um, take this club of ours now. Um, go back 10, 12 years, we were running three teams, first te uh, the senior team, second team and the third team. We don't even run the second team anymore, although our juniors uh, section are very strong. But, you know, we should be able to run the second team. But nobody in the valley, there's only one or two clubs in the valley that will run the second team. So it's not all the bed of roses that people would like to, to think, uh, you know. Is that because of a lack of players or a lack of funding? Um, I think it's a bit of both. There's so much competition uh, outside the game of uh, rugby uh, these days for young boys. Nobody wants to come out and uh, into the fresh air these days. What actual tangible ways are there to sell the game in your view? Um, if we can start with the juniors, uh, looking at it as a business, for every kid junior that plays there, he'll either bring his mother or his father or his grandfather and his grandmother. Now, if we can have them stepping from watching the kid to become members of the club, then we can have strong financial basis to push back into the rugby and then we can go out and attract people in, not pay players, but to make the rugby club more attractive, more of a family atmosphere like we used to have years ago. Does a show like ours, which tries to promote grassroots rugby, help Oh, m must do, must do. Um, the last time we had any sort of cameras here was uh, many years ago when we drew Cardiff in the old Schweppes Cup and huge crowds there. But that was the last time we had a camera here. Now you guys can help us by helping to sell the club, you know, and I think uh, the people who are um, running Welsh Rugby today or guiding Welsh Rugby today um, must think of other ways of um, publicising the clubs um, through any, any means, like you guys coming along tonight. You know, the unfortunate part about it is you can't show the game. Well, yes, that's, that's, that's unfortunate at the moment. When yeah, yeah, but there's nothing we can do about that. But uh, yes, we, we're more than grateful for you guys coming along and uh, every little bit helps. We've come to speak to Lee Jarvis, head coach of High Flying Merthyr Rugby Club. We'd also hope to catch up with Hugh Watkins, however he was unable to make it today, but we did catch up with him later on the phone. Grassroots rugby is where our bread and butter is. Yeah, we're all very happy with the success of the national team and we all go and support national team. I'm, I'm a very, very passionate Welshman who supports Wales through and through, but grassroots rugby needs you know, support of, of, like yours in highlighting games. I, I, at the moment, I don't think Scrum 5 or the BBC are, are doing itself any justice. You know, the Premiership, I've been lucky to watch a lot of Premiership rugby this year, and, and the Premiership is, is starting to develop some good, exciting young talent. And the grassroots rugby needs your support. 
So I, I'm all in favour of shows like this where we go out to, to the grassroots rugby and we get opinions of, of those guys who are watching grassroots rugby week in, week out and not watching it from you know, uh, an ivory tower. So it's very important that shows like this are, are aired. As, as now an outsider with, with, with no, um, no involvement with, with Welsh rugby, um, I think it's quite sad at the moment where we get into stages where we don't know what competitions we were playing in, uh, where people were playing. You know, the likes of Adam Jones, as an example, is a, is a, is, is a very serious issue for us. You know, I feel very sorry for Adam in terms of where he's, he's, he's at at the moment. And, and and we should never get to that stage, you know. We we should be looking after our players, and we should be looking after Welsh rugby as as a whole. But at the moment, I just feel that we are in limbo, and the public really are are crying out for for answers. Whether we'll get those answers in, in the foreseeable future, who knows? Lee, thanks for joining us. Having a great season here at Merthyr. What's the secret? Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's no secret really. We've uh, we, we've really worked hard from pre-season. Uh, we recruited well during the summer, and uh, we, you know me and Gary Oregon instilled some uh, professionalism in the in the squad, uh, together with uh, you know good disciplines and uh, you know everything sort of spiraled from there really. So uh, you know enjoying it still a little bit to do to finish the season off as champions, and uh, you know we're just thoroughly thoroughly enjoying the season. So up for promotion next year. How far can the club go? Uh, who knows? You know, we got we got great backing here with the committee and uh, you know and the support we get as well. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed we do get into the championship next year. Um, we will recruit one or two players just to strengthen the squad. Uh, we've got a good group of players here which uh, which want to play rugby and enjoy playing rugby. So, uh, you know, who knows? Um, I would like to think we'd be sort of top six, top four next year as well. So, uh, and then uh, you know maybe push for 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 obviously champions the year after. When you out and about visiting the other grassroots clubs in, in Wales. What's the, the general feeling of things? Tough out there? I think it is tough, yeah. I mean, you've seen uh, one or two clubs go down this year and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's not nice to see, really. You know, I, I'm obviously, the clubs I'm from is uh, my hometown is Red Valley and, um, you know, I play for the likes of Paul Apreed, you know, and, uh, you know, great, great clubs that uh, are well supported. Um, it is a tough environment at the moment and, you know, as long as you're, you support yourself and you do well, well on the field, then, you know, I suppose the support will come back. As well. What difference can a show like ours make to grassroots clubs? I think it'll be huge, really, because it, obviously the lack of coverage uh, during during the year and on, on uh, normal TV. So, uh, you know, the likes of uh, ourselves, uh, we haven't had much coverage this year as far as what we've done. Um, <clears throat> I think it'll be huge, really. I'm um, just getting the point across of you know these little clubs are still uh, still surviving, still going strong. Um, and I know it's. Uh, you know, I certainly tune in to, uh, to the shows that you're producing and I think it's superb. And on, just before we finish, you mentioned pont de have you got any predictions for the big match on Saturday? Um, <clears throat> tough game, um, I know, uh, you know pont de have pont just lost uh, against Newport in a week but um, I have no doubt that uh, a full house down Saris Road and uh, you know, I'll back pont de uh, you know, all day long really. I think pont de will win by uh, six points. Go on to lift the trophy? Without a doubt. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Lee. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers. So there we have it. IWR TV can no longer bring you highlights of grassroots rugby, not without a benefactor or a partner, and certainly not this season. We're sorry to those clubs who have worked with us, provided us with footage, and invited us to film matches. We know we haven't travelled to North Wales yet or further west. However, these locations were absolutely in our plans to visit very soon, had we not been inhibited by the rights issues. We're truly sorry to all these grassroots clubs who we feel we have let down. We'll be back again soon with a panel show and we'll continue to examine the world of Welsh rugby and gather opinions about its current state. And we'll be working with others to put the requested business plan together. We'll also continue the struggle to get more coverage for the grassroots of Welsh rugby. And that starts now. We have created an online petition to the Welsh Government to ask them to work with the WRU to ensure games at the root of our national sport can be seen by a wider audience, whether on IWR TV or elsewhere. Please add your weight to this campaign and sign the petition today. The web address is on your screen now, so please pass this on to as many friends, family and colleagues as possible. We'll also be getting in touch with the BBC Trust to ask why the corporation has used taxpayers' money to purchase the rights to grassroots rugby in Wales, which they have admitted they have had no plans to use, and how long they have held these rights for, consequently effectively inhibiting the coverage and potential growth of rugby union in Wales. 
We'll be back again soon with our next show and updates on these issues. Once again, thank you for watching and supporting not only IWR TV, but the grassroots of Welsh Rugby.